Boom! What's going on, everyone? I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Steel, founder of Advantage Diecast, welcoming you to the warehouse on another episode of Toy Talk. The Rotator. Has there ever been a more ingenious tow truck made? My friend over in West Virginia told me about a recovery on the interstate that he was sent out on. Snow was falling bad on the mountain and conditions were terrible to drive in when the state police called for a heavy truck accident recovery. He said, I'm on my way boss. And the boss yelled back, don't take my million dollar truck out in this weather. And then he went on and sent the other driver with a smaller underlift truck out on that call. Soon afterwards, the other driver called the shop and said, send the rotator, I'm stuck. To which my friend replied, I told you you needed my truck and I'm on my way. Of course, the boss hadn't yet learned and said, don't take my million dollar truck out in this weather. Bossman said, I'm on my way. And he jumped in the other truck and headed out. Of course, I can kind of see his point with that kind of investment money on the line and horrible driving conditions. But still, you've got to send the right truck for the job. And a little while later, the boss man called the shop and sheepishly said, bring the rotator, we're all stuck. To which my friend replied, I told you, you need the rotator for this job and I'm on my way. On the scene, he towed out the other two stuck tow trucks and then went to work pulling out the semi up and then clearing the interstate. And when it was all done, he made it back to the shop in the right truck for the job without putting a scratch on it. Even with the extreme investment, lots of time could have been saved and danger for other drivers could have been avoided had he just sent the right truck to begin with, a rotator. A rotator tow truck is one of the heaviest and the largest tow trucks available. The rotator tow truck is one of the pivoting varieties, but it features a crane-like arm on it. Some models of this powerful tow truck have capacity to lift up to 75 tons. This class of trucks is used for heavy towing and recovery of tractor trailers and other heavy trucks. Why have a rotator? Why have a truck that costs a million dollars or more? Well, imagine you've been called to a wreck site and you come upon a truck that's down in a ditch or over an embankment, making it tough to safely recover the truck and get it back on the road for towing. You need to find a rotator to do this job. The arm of these trucks can rotate 360 degrees and can easily extend to a height of about 30 feet which means it is better suited for most types of trucks to handle difficult roadside situations. Recoveries from freeway situations. Using a rotator tow truck is highly beneficial as it requires a relatively small area to upright or winch trucks and equipment back onto the road safely and efficiently. Since you can turn and extend the boom of the rotator tow truck, it fits the requirements of various jobs. Salespeople often cite three good reasons to add a rotator recovery truck to a fleet of towing and recovery vehicles. I know at a million dollars a copy, this cost scares most tow operators, but their reasons are sound. Number one, a rotator can add new accounts to your business because of its versatility. Although guys, be careful, there are some new regulations that are going to limit the use of a rotator in certain situations. 
rotators are being used for many different types of jobs these days beyond just towing and recovery. Rotator operators have a new customer base for their business by offering lifting services. Number two, in some cases, local terrain can play a big part in the decision to purchase a rotator. Ever drive to a wreck site and find that your small truck can do nothing to help recover the vehicle because your rig is just too small. Say the wreck is over a hill and down a steep hill. You watch as a rotator rolls up and takes over the recovery job. And number three, municipalities are beginning to call for quick clearance teams. A rotator is an ideal truck to add to a fleet. When a wreck happens on a busy road or a freeway, time is of the essence. Beginning with only one truck in 1969, suburban towing of Louisville has grown quickly into the largest towing company in Kentucky. Suburban towing offers customers the quickest response times, trained operators, late model equipment, expert knowledge, and excess liability insurance to protect the customer's cargo. As an added bonus, Suburban Towing has over 40 years of experience in towing and recovery. Suburban was the first company to have in its fleet a heavy-duty underlift and rotator truck in the Kentuckiana area. Suburban Towing specializes in heavy-duty towing and recovery using the latest in innovations. Suburban has continually updated their fleet of five rotators to include a 75-ton twin-steer winch hey, truck. what's going on out there at the rock quarry? This is supposed to be a simple hook. Well, it sounds like there's some excitement going on out at the local quarry. Let's jump in the Jeep and run out there and see what's up. Looks like we've had an accident in the rock floor. I think a large boulder fell off the cliff and just landed on top of a low boy trailer that had just delivered a brand new piece of cat equipment. Apparently, a suburban towing rotator tow truck is on the scene. And it looks like he has everything under control. The bent trailer, I think what he's gonna do with it is pick it up and set it over there on that step deck trailer to haul it away. I'd hazard to guess that the frame on that damaged trailer is totally destroyed. Well, that was exciting. It's not every day that a boulder lands on top of the trailer. I guess we better get back to the warehouse and get back to work. And here we go, guys. This is the Peterbilt 389 with Miller Century 1150 rotator tow bed on it. It has a 36-inch bunk, and you can see that it is fully functional. However, those pistons that hold up the boom are not strong enough to hold up the weight of that trailer. The trailer just weighs too much. However, it does rotate around just like the real one and the cables and the winches do work. 
so that you can sort of make it look like it's hooked up. Right here I've got it moving over so that it can drop that trailer over onto the step deck to haul it away after the accident down at the rock quarry. Now, a note about that trailer. <laughs> that trailer is a result of bad metal. And that's what can happen with die cast. They can, the metal, if it's not correct in the alloy, it can become very fragile and it can shatter, break, or anything else. Also, it can warp and bend. And that trailer literally just warped on its own. It folded up and then the rear axle snapped off. Now you can see how the boom goes retracts and it will also fully extend all three sections. You can see that right there. You can also see how the cables, if you're not very careful with them, the cables can get well tangled up. Now let me go on and get this other truck out of the way and the people out of the way so that we can actually look much better at this uh, suburban Peterbilt. And see how that trailer's warped? That, that's just happened out of the blue over time. That's a downside to uh, die-cast metal. So if you think die-cast is perfect and it makes the best toys, well, not necessarily. It does fall apart over time, particularly if the batch isn't better. Now, the back, you can see that winch works. You can also see the underlift folds up and folds down. It also extends so that you can pick up so that you can pick up the uh, truck under the underlift and tow it away, making it a real tow. The cables, you can see where they uh, retract in. Watch that first cable, seeing it going up right there. All you have to do is rotate the little drums that the cables are on. Now be careful when you're doing that. Try and keep a little tension on the cable, otherwise they have a chance that they can get wrapped around outside the drum and that will cause you a real problem. See those drums where my fingers are right there. That's what rolls them up. Then you can retract in the uh, boom one piece at a time and see how the cables will just kind of spool up. Be very careful with them. You don't want those cables to get on the wrong side of the cable drum that they're winding up on. In reality, these really are not meant to be played with. They're just meant to make a static display or sit on a shelf or, in most cases, just stay in the box. But there you can see the cables are all rolled up. And then we'll pivot it around back in line. The lower winch cable, it works exactly the same way. Just uh, rotate the drum and the cable will come in or out. You can see in transport mode that uh, underlift piece would be there. The outriggers, they fold up underneath and then they raise up and down. They're on both sides of the truck. And you can see the front set extends further than the back set. And you might have to work a little bit at it because sometimes there's a little piece of plastic that's stuck, but then they'll work. No, not really a problem. Rotates it back around and... And there it is, all put back together. That would in transport mode onto the driver's side. You can see it has a triaxle configuration with a lift axle. However, it looks like that axle is a little too far forward in the wheel well. It should have been a little further back. It's not quite centered. It's got extra lights all along the truck. Suburban towing of Sellersburg, Indiana, and Louisville, Kentucky is right there. It's got its U.S. DOT numbers, Indiana address, Louisville address. There's the Indiana address. There's the Louisville address. Suburban towing on the boom. Small bunk sleeper. Fuel tank with steps. Def tank, air tanks, battery box. Also, it's got a truck number of 475 on the air cleaner. Chrome breathers. Chrome mirrors. It has roof lights on it, and then it's got the big light bar on top of the uh, boom. Around to the front, up top you can see it has four air horns, roof lights that are 
amber colored with silver backs, chrome visor, hard plastic front windshield with black outline, and molded on windshield wipers with black paint on them. On the front, suburban towing on printed on the chrome bumper. That's pretty cool. Got the Peterbilt uh, logo center on the grill, and you've got 389 style headlights with individual jewel lenses for the headlights and a little orange paint for the marker lights or turn signal lights. Around to the passenger side, you got a step set and a fuel tank, sleeper door with the USDOT numbers on it, and more of the same graphics. You've also got plenty of toolbox doors. None of those toolboxes open though. Just keep that in mind. They're just uh, molded in and carved with the uh, tooling. Uh, turning them around to the back, you can see Suburban on the boom, and you can see the uh, brake lights, turn signals, and flashing lights that they would have. Now you can see each individual uh, outrigger comes out or goes back in. Boom comes down and extends, and the upper boom goes up and down. Turning them up top, you can see the top of the boom. Let's pivot the boom out of the way. You can see other cable detail and detail inside coat molded into the bed. And then you got the diamond plate walk plates around the uh, top of the bed. The rotator will pivot 360 degrees. So you don't have any problems there. Going underneath. Wow, got an extra fuel tank right there under the passenger steps. That's kind of weird, but maybe that's the way they ran it. Oh, one of them, this is probably a hydro tank, and that's a fuel tank. Got the National Toy Trucking Construction Show logo there, because this was the show truck model. First gear is Tampo, or first gear is cast in, Payos to Iowa is cast in, and licensed by Packard is cast in. Black frame, black drive shafts. This is just a lift axle. Also looks like it is a, a bit of a steer axle. Sometimes they would be. Uh, big floats on the front and the rear and duels on the uh, rear axles. Exhaust pipe coming out of the engine going up to the stacks. They did a nice job. 389s also have the opening hood and they have steering. It's not true steering, it's positionable, but it is. they do turn so you can click them in place and have the truck turn. And under the hood, it's got that beautiful Packard engine. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to show you that this does pivot all the way around. Just like the real ones. As rotators are designed to work a wreck in line or uh, parallel to the accident as opposed to being perpendicular like your uh, end lifts and other winch trucks are required to so they can leave the roads open. Normally what I do is I have the toy in the box and then I unbox it. Well this one I had the toy already out so what I'm going to do is go on and box it up. Before I do that it has a little package that says spare parts and these spare parts are just your extra mirrors which is a nice thing for them to put in there. truck goes this way. Boom. Another nice thing about this one, it does come with a certificate of authenticity stating how many models were made and what it is and it's also signed by Kathy Scheibe. It's got the licensing of Peterbilt, Miller Industries, and First Gear, and the Toy Truck and Construction Show. That comes in a DCP by First Gear box that has a gray piece in the back with just black stripes instead of the, the nice mural piece. But the rest of the packaging is toy trucker and contractor specific. You can see it's got the Toy Trucker logo, model about the informa 
model information about the model it's got the year the 2020 national toy truck and construction show peterbilt logo die cast metal dcp by first gear and like all of them they're ages 14 and up up top same information but then they added the dates of the show august 14th through 16th 2020 unfortunately this year it was an online show because of worldwide events the side it's got toy trucker and contractor and a little window so you can see the end and same on the front you can see the front to the back it has toy trucker and contractor model information and a little blurb about suburban towing and what they have done they're one of the biggest tow, tr tow companies in Kentucky and we go underneath and you can get to the item number 69-0862 made for toy trucker and contractor if you're not a subscriber of toy trucker and contractor you really need to be a subscriber and that my friends is the Peterbilt 389 with Miller Century model 1150 rotator tow body for suburban towing and the 2020 national toy truck and construction show how about that rotator the rotator truly is the best innovation to date for towing and recovery companies to have to help clean up accidents easier and open the roads faster i hope you guys have enjoyed the video today don't forget to grab your very own copy of tips for valuing your collection with the link in the description below and you can also buy many of the great dcp and first gear models on my website farmtoysandmore.com guys i release new videos every tuesday thursday and saturday at 10 p.m eastern time so please take a quick moment to tap that subscribe button and ring the bell next to it to get notified of all of my future videos i truly appreciate each and every member of my youtube family way more than i can ever express and then tap that like button that way, it'll tell YouTube to send this video out to other great die-cast collectors just like you. And finally, tap the share button. That way, you can share this video with your friends and your family on your social media. And I'm sure they would truly appreciate you thinking of them. What a day. Accident out at the quarry. Guys, forget to turn the radio off for when I'm filming a video. Oh, well. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I've got to close up Advantage Diecast's Southside Warehouse Doors on another episode of Toy Talk.